Hey everybody, welcome back to Pass Money. You know, I'm Kirby, that's Alex over there. Uh, today we're gonna talk about if we could start all over again, what would we do? And first we're gonna go start with Alex, you know, give that millennial perspective. You know, most people that's probably watching closer to his age than mine, but still people that's closer to my age, it'll give you stuff. And then if you have kids that's, you know, coming up, getting, you know, getting to that age of wanting to be independent and move out the house, Take some of the lessons that Alex is bringing and some of the lessons that I'm bringing to the table and start teaching those to your kids and teaching them to your kids so maybe they can, you know, learn from our mistakes and improve. And besides just teaching it to your kids, start adopting some of these philosophies and showing to your kids exactly how financial freedom works. I mean, it's, it's great that, you know, kids are, you know, I'm saying kids, but you know, the teenagers and the people in their 20s and 21s, 22s are following us, learning things to improve their financial situation. But this is for all age groups. It don't matter if you start at 30, 40, or 50, you can still reach financial freedom in the time you still have left here on earth. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, Alex, if you could start all over today, what are, and I just like three, three so we don't have a video long. What's three things that you would do differently if you could start all the way back over to right before you moved out into adulthood? All right. First thing I would do is I would have started my 401k earlier. So I always say, you know, I think it's a mistake that I waited till I was 21. I wish I had done it when I turned 18. Um, and the biggest reason for that is we have talked about it in another video, but if you look at the uh, the growth span, you know, say 40 years, um, let's say 40 years compared to 37 years, you know, the balance in which your 401k would be in 40 years compared to 37 years at the amount you would be contributing and the, the, uh, the growth that it would have year over year is hugely different because by the time it starts hitting those decade marks, the balance grows more and more. And so the percentage that your account grows, that percentage number is higher and higher each year compounding. And so that three year difference I think is so crucial. Um, and I would have started that earlier. The yeah, the, yeah, the compound, the compound interest is, uh, that's why they call it the eighth one of the world. Compound interest will go a huge way especially the earlier you start out. But, you know, for, you know, people that's older and listening to this, the key is just starting, just starting and putting money in there. But yes, that is a big one. That's probably one of my major, I'm not going to say major regrets because, uh, again, I was in the military, so I didn't have a 401k match. You know, he had a TSP and stuff like that. But yeah, I can see how that's a big, a big hindrance when you're looking back on it. But go ahead, sorry. What's number two? Uh, the next one would probably be learning to say no earlier uh so <laughs> that word no is a very you know you learn it at a young age but you don't learn what it means <laughs> um it's very important to say no because you have to understand I, I think it's so taught in society that if you tell friends and family no when it comes to finances then you just don't care about them or you don't love them but really if you give handouts to people that you say care about, it's not aiding their situation. It's just putting a Band-Aid on it. And I know of several people in my life that I'm close to that I've given financial advice to, probably almost every single person that I know, um, or tried to even offer it. And it's always, just about always been declined. And that financial advice is much more valuable than just a simple handout. Um, but the majority of people would rather take, you know, a handout to fix their current temporary situation and never learn how to improve their financial life. Yeah. So the word no is very important to me. But the thing is, is when you, when you give one, so family member call you and say, hey, or well not family member, friend or family member call and say, hey, I need I need money to, you know, well, they're going to they blow their money at the club party vacation. Then they're going to call and say, 
oh, I got a, a light bill due. Can you look out for me? You know, and the only thing you're doing is financing their bad decisions. If you give them that stop gap, if you give them that stop gap, like you said, a band aid to pay that bill, they're going to think, okay, well, now I can go do it again. And I got somebody to call, you know, they pay you back or whatever, if they pay you back, then they just going to keep making those finan bad financial decisions until they hear the word no long enough and they have to sit there and really look in the mirror and realize that they're in a bad financial situation. They will just continually and perpetually do that the rest of their life. Just make bad financial decisions, bad financial decisions. Next thing you know, they wake up, they're 65, no retirement, nothing in a 401k. They don't own any assets and they're sitting there broke, hoping and asking you, the same person who you kept band-aiding their life, uh, can I sleep on your couch? Because I don't have nowhere to stay because Social Security is not. Uh, taking care of me like the government said the shit. Right. And I mean, like, and maybe it's just my brain that works like this, but I started to realize, like, being an avid investor, getting people that ask me for money today and say, oh, but I'll pay you back over a month or over two months or whatever. It's just to me, like, as we all, or as you, I hear you talk about this a lot. Time is the most valuable thing that you have. So, that month or two months to me is like, I know what I could use with the money they're asking to invest it and what I can make off my investment and them holding my money for two months would hold me back from my growth. And maybe that's considered selfish to people, but at the same time, if it's your money, it's your money. I mean, you're not obligated to be a interest-free lender and um in in that situation i think as you start investing that it's a uh definitely a setback yeah true uh, what you got for number three number three uh the house hack i uh i i would do that or buying a duplex living in one side renting out the other um, I really do think that is just like a cheat code to wealth. I mean, you get to put three and a half percent down on an asset by renting out the other side. You, you could cash flow or be living for free. By the time you move out into, say, another one, you can rent out the other unit. Then you have a cash flowing investment, an asset, and then just do the thing over and over and over again until you get to the point where, say, you do want a house you're not coming out of your own pocket to buy that house, but you have cash flowing investments that pay for the house instead. And it's just simplest form. Yeah. Yeah, no, I like it. I like it. Well, thanks for giving us your uh, insight on things you'll do if you can do it all over again. Uh, hopefully people will take that knowledge and that information and use it in their life, especially, especially the younger kids going into adulthood, finding ways to how to make money. Without house hacking is a big key element. And the word no, you got to use that word no uh, more often than you think. And, you know, the family, you still love them, but you got to love yourself more. And loving yourself more is putting yourself in a better financial situation. Uh, like Jay-Z always said, I can't help the poor from one of them. So you need to win, then give back. Not, hey, everybody poor together. You have to win, then give back. And, and that's... And that's how you win in this financial journey. Because if you start making more money at your job and you keep giving, 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 next thing you know, you're going to look up, you're 40, 50, 60 years old, and the only thing you did was took care of your family. And those same people that you're helping, if you ever go into a bind, they won't be there to help you. So just love yourself more and take care of yourself and get yourself in a good financial situation. Well, where it'll set you up where you're not, if you're helping somebody, you're not even worried about if they pay you the money back. But that takes years of years of you caring about yourself and your financial situation. And then of course, when you have kids, wife or husband married, then you need a bigger nest egg. So it needs to get bigger as time goes and keep financing people bad financial decisions in your life will only hinder that process. So with all that being said, I hope y'all like the information. And we'll be back at you with an, another video soon. Have a good one.